This is Twit. The Five Eyes Alliance, uh, we've spoken of from time to time. It's an alliance of national intelligence partners whose members are Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, and the US. And the rhetoric surrounding this issue of encrypted messaging is heating up. Um, there was a story last Tuesday in The Telegraph, which was headlined, Facebook is threatening to hinder police by increasing encryption. Uh, and there, the UK's new home secretary is, I guess I would pronounce her name, Preeti, P-R-I-T-I, Preeti Patel. Um, uh, the Telegraph reports that in, that in the first intervention by a minister, the new Home Secretary says the tech giant, meaning Facebook, tech, tech giant's plans to introduce end-to-end -end encryption on its messaging platform would benefit, and here she's saying, child abusers, drug traffickers, and terrorists plotting attacks. Uh, writing for the Telegraph, she says... It would prevent law enforcement agencies investigating and tracking down lawbreakers by enabling criminals to hide their messages. And, of course, as we know, and, and what she was responding to was that uh, Mark Zuckerberg in March announced what he framed as a major change to Facebook. You know, and we, we were joking about it at the time, Leo, saying they ought to just scrap <laughs> like all, everything that they have rather than trying to fix what they have and just start over because, you know, they're discovering logs of that, that code had made of, of unencrypted passwords and all this craziness. But, but the point was that Mark had said that they were going to be essentially further encrypting like everything else, not just having a, a, an encrypted WhatsApp app, but adding the same sort of protections to Facebook Messenger and, and, and Instagram as well. Um, and apparently th this is the move that has already, that has apparently set everybody off. Um, and of course, this prospect is unanimously seen as bad news by the Five Eyes Nations. Um, and this, this uh, uh, warning, if, if it's, that's what it was, by Patel, uh, came two days after a, the, a meeting that she hosted. She hosted a Five Eyes meeting in London with Jeffrey Cox, who's the UK's attorney general. Um, and, uh, and that's where I think that probably our, our own uh, 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 attorney general spoke um, because in attendance were security and law enforcement officials from all of the Five Eyes nations who unanimously agreed that they were worried about high-tech companies moving to, and what they said was, in quote from their, from their uh, uh, meeting, deliberately designing their systems in a way that precludes any form of access to content, even in cases of the most serious crimes. So they, the, the, the meeting republic, it published a report um, from, or a, what they called a communique coming from the meeting calling for back doors. And of course, this is a, a problem we have is that, uh, you know, back door is a heavily weighted or freighted uh, term. They said tech companies should include mechanisms in the design of their encrypted products and services whereby governments acting with appropriate legal authority can obtain access to data in a readable and usable format. Um, in, uh, in September of 2018, so what, just about a, almost a year ago, uh, the Five Eyes governments had called on their governments to demand that tech giants build some sort of technology in. Uh, and they were saying that they would be insisting upon it by force if necessary. From a memo that the Australian government issued on behalf of the pact a year ago, they said, should governments continue to encounter impediments to lawful access to information necessary to aid the protection of the citizens of our countries, we may pursue technological enforcement, legislative, 
or other measures to achieve lawful access solutions. So uh, anyway, Reuters covered this and and uh, also spoke with a uh, former senior a senior European security official who said that the Five Eyes is using very general language uh, at this point at best to demand governments. Uh, demand for government's access in telecom systems and uh, uh, and you know and wanting some sort of a way of drilling a hole through encryption. So this battle is coming. We know it's coming. It yes, it it absolutely is. And uh, you know, and uh, as I have said, and I'll just reiterate one last time um, that. That this this the the counter argument, I think, is 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 sort of equally wrong or overblown on the other side, which is you know the so-called experts on the security side are all arguing that this cannot be done. There's no way to do this safely, you know. And and again, I agree that if if we if we define what the government wants in the way that a backdoor has always been, I mean, that term has been used, no one would disagree that that's bad. The idea that, that, there, that the encryption itself would be compromised so that there was the golden key or the master key or something that allowed unilateral decryption of the content. But... That's not the language, and and it may as a, it may be as a result of the pushback, which has already come from the tech community, that we're seeing an improvement and a tightening of the language, where governments are no longer talking about golden keys. Now they're saying that you know even Bill Barr last week, you know, he was arguing against warrant proof encryption. So meaning that if a warrant were served on some entity, there would be some means of obtaining some content. Well, and as I last said, when we talked about this, I think it's crucial to separate policy from technology because I am sure that the technology can provide whatever we decide we want from a policy standpoint. So rather than, than arguing and, and, you know, and, and, and that's, that's been one of the problems is that the, the politicians hear the tech, the Silicon Valley geniuses saying there's no, it cannot be done. There's no way it can be done. Well, the politicians know that's not true and, and they're right that it's, that it's not true that 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 there isn't a means to do this if we want to so again um <clears throat> what we have to do is just decide what it is we want reach an agreement and then implement that from a technology standpoint the technology can do anything we want it to do we have all the crypto bits we we ever need in order to pull this off it's just a matter of of you know as we've said doesn't have to be a backdoor doesn't have to be, you know, someone said, uh, I have him in, in, in my show notes, um, uh, Wisner, who's Wisner? Uh, oh, Ben Wisner, an expert in national security law with the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union. Uh, yeah, I've interviewed you know, him. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. But he said that if the U.S. and other nations get access to private messengers, to private message, messages, Wisner told Reuters in an interview, that means that adversarial nations such as Russia could demand that they get the same access. Well, no, that doesn't mean that. Um, I mean, the, they, we could decide if we want to give that to them, but again, it's entirely possible to, to provide access in it with whatever degree of control we want it's not easy, and I won't argue that it's not as secure because, yes, if you're going to add a mechanism 
to selectively decrypt by definition. That's that's less absolutely secure, but that may be the 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 cost, you know, the the price if we're going to be operating in an environment where where we need to abide by the laws of a given government in order to have the technology that we want the rest of the time. So you've anyway. talked about this before, but I think it's important that we at some point talk about how it would be done in a way that doesn't compromise security for non-governmental actors. In other words, allow hackers in. I know you're convinced right. that that's possible, but I think you have some convincing to do because you seem to be one of the few that, that thinks this. So at some point we should we should delve into that. You've talked about it before, and I understand your point of view. But uh, yeah, you're, you're I think you're an outlier in this. <laughs> yeah, and you know me, I don't mind being an outlier. No, not at all. <laughs> and I think you're probably right, to be honest. But I but I just uh, think it'd be worth talking yeah. about it. Yeah, I mean, there there you know the, the the example I've used in the past is uh, is and and this is an example. Uh, this is not universally applicable because not everybody has the control that Apple does. But when we talk about iMessage, the idea that, that Apple is managing the keys, and in fact, this is what the UK has talked about with this ghost protocol, where, th where, there, would, where there would be the ability to add a silent additional party to the conversation. Right now, iMessage supports many-to-many multi-way messaging, not just one-to-one. -one. And many of these protocols are able to operate that way. So, so Apple is managing the keys for us. Um, Apple could create an additional entity that would be joined to an iMessage group that wouldn't appear. And that that newly created entity could be created under warrant from the government and the government given access to to that entity as a silent partner, as a as an invisible participant in an iMessage conversation, in which case they would receive all of the transactions back and forth and it would be our, and it do, it doesn't compromise other communications that that user has as long as apple it keeps the keys close to its vest obviously exactly yeah. and exactly and so, and, and, I, I and, think and, everybody and note would, that, uh, that apple is doing that now well apple that's the has point has <laughs> all of those keys right. now <laughs> that's the point uh, I, I think anybody would stipulate yeah okay but that's not going to be the end of the government's request because what they don't what they really don't like is end to end messaging as long as a corporate entity that they can subpoena, that they can f serve a warrant to, has the keys, they're fine with that. What they don't like is end-to-end -end encryption, which means the only person who has the keys are the parties in the conversation. And, is there and a way why? to make that uh, breakable without no. compromising security? No. No. And, 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 and this is to your point, Leo, that, that you brought up correctly last time, which is it's math. That we already have the ability to do unbreakable encryption. And so, so I'd so, be I mean, happy to give the government, <laughs> since they already have it, the right to do whatever they want to do with non end to end encryption, Telegram and, and Apple's messages. And well, WhatsApp is end to end, right? WhatsApp, uh, nobody holds those keys, right? It's using uh, Open Whispers uh, protocols. Is that right? Uh, it's been a while since I looked. I think they um, use I think they use the Signal messaging protocol. Signal. Let's give Signal oh, an example. Signal. I do, no one I has do the know, keys. I do know that WhatsApp is using Single. Signal. Is using yeah. Signal. Yes. And that in that case, yeah. there is no key escrow. There's no one holds that key. You are the key. You and the the only parties in, who could access that would be the parties involved in the conversation. Well, because that's the design of it. So what but would you do then? I see the government wants WhatsApp. That's what they want. They don't. I don't think they really care about Apple messages because they can already serve a subpoena to Apple. They can warrant Apple and get that message. They yeah. know that. Yeah, they, they want, want WhatsApp. The, exactly. And so, I don't know that Moxie would ever be moved. No, I know to, he wouldn't. <laughs> to to add to add 
that technology. But but what we're talking about here, I mean, it, it's serious. It would be the government outlawing, f- formally outlawing encryption that it cannot serve a warrant on in order to to obtain access. It would be against the law. And, and I mean, the government's made mistakes before. Remember when you – I remember you couldn't use uh, more than 40-bit keys once upon a time. Right. Because they the government – They ammunition. Yes. And so, you, you, so 128-bit keys existed – but you couldn't you couldn't like go outside of the U.S. with a with more than forty bits of encryption, which led to people because wearing T-shirts <laughs> with the code for strong encryption and exporting it that way. Yeah, it's so, pretty hard to tie I'm, that down. So imagine a world where a a law is passed by the U.S. government that says. At some point after, I mean, and there'll be some 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 sunsetting period, you know, like by 2025, it is against the law to use encryption that there isn't is that there is not a means for the government to obtain a warrant for access to. Now, at that point, Facebook needs to decide: are they going to give up encryption? Or are they going to soften their encryption? I mean, Signal's open source, so um, you know. So again, there are and there are other smart people. So it it might be that that we have no choice but like for for Apple and for Facebook and for Google. I mean, major commercial organizations to use warrant. Compatible encryption. I think that's as the only as yeah. the only choice. And 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 and, and the art. Of course, the counter argument is good, and that is that well, bad guys will use illegal then encryption. Use signal. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, yes, and yes, they will. But still, the government will think, well, this is the best we could get. This is we my know, fear. That's least, not what the at, government at will least, think. <laughs> <laughs> then my government will say, well, that's not enough. We still can't see every communication. Well, in that case, the only thing they could do would be to put some something in our ISPs, which block anything yeah. that the ISP cannot decrypt. Oh, that's interesting. In which case, We're then done. the end user gets handcuffed. We're like, done. then illegal encryption won't work. Yep. Because you won't be able to transit illegal transit. encryption over the wire. Okay, well, you've just drawn a picture of our future. I'm afraid. I mean, I'm afraid, Leo, because this isn't going away. The yeah. government is does no, this, not so it shows this. no sign. Yeah. It's too easy for them to make a law. It's like, oh, good. You know, now we have a law. Everybody got to follow the law now. And it's like, okay. <laughs>